Okay. Hello, Joan. Nice to see you this morning. Hi, Rosa <laughs> Lovely to see you too. Great. Um, so we're meeting here to talk about Shimataji's visit to Sheffield. Um, and you are in Sheffield, have been there for quite some time and very nice too, very welcoming whenever um, yogis come and visit and everything. Would you like to tell us about um, how you got your realization? Where did you learn about uh, Srimantaji and what was it like for you? Well, I actually came in uh, 1982, June 1982, after I just passed my diving test. And uh, I came actually along to keep my sister company. Uh, she was really interested in this and I just liked the word yoga. I uh, didn't know what it meant. I thought it would probably be keep fit type thing, but um, obviously something inside me knew that it wasn't because I came in a, a very nice dress and my makeup on and my high heels. Uh, and um, so that was really a, an incredible experience looking back. But at the time, it was very gentle, you know. Uh, and uh, so we were explained about Saj Yoga and I had no idea what it what it might be about. But we had this um, nice public program and uh, we we listened to a talk of Srimataji. I find it a little difficult at first with the photograph just because of my upbringing uh, but when I closed my eyes I could actually I could actually see Srimataji in in you know with with my eyes closed and I felt very comforted and very uh, very happy you know um, so we sat there for a little while and we listened to a talk of Srimataji and then uh, we had a workshop uh, and that was really quite interesting because uh, I'm sat next to my sister and she's feeling all these amazing things. And I'm actually having the idea that, oh, I'll, it, it'll not happen to me because, you know, I, you know I, it, I'm not good enough for it to happen to me. And then what happened was that um, um, somebody was stood behind me and actually I just began to feel more and more relaxed and more comfortable. Uh, and then suddenly realizing that I was in this place where I thought, oh, this is me. Uh, oh, I quite like me, which is an absolute revelation. You know, if, you, if you're if you always um, being judged and, you know, you're this or you're that. And, and but you're never actually allowed to just be yourself. Uh, and uh, I was feeling so nice and I could feel this fragrance of roses, which was it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Uh, and um, and then I've got a lady tapping me on the shoulder, asking me how I feel. And I just want to be there. I don't want to talk. I don't, I don't want to engage with anything else. Just enjoy being in this place. Uh, and uh, I'm just explaining that I can, I can smell all these roses. And she's telling me it must be a rose on the table, which is quite a long way away. And in English rooms, they just don't smell. So I just sort of like knew that, that that wasn't it. And it was, looking back, it was, you know, it was the moment that completely changed my life. Uh, but I didn't know it at the time, you know, so I had to go into that. Um, so that was in 1982. And then in 1984 was the first time I went to see Shumashi, which was in Hampstead Town Hall, which was a, a really, a really, a really big event and actually the hamster program was a series of four so there were when you when you actually look back you can you can see that it was a series of four talks that Shumashi was given uh, and uh, this was also um, it was a really big deal for me and I really enjoyed it so much to see Shumashi for the first time uh, in, and in this very grand place which you know really that's the place you want to see the goddess you know with all the chandeliers and everything and uh, so that that was quite an experience and also seeing um, um, people that I already knew from Sheffield there who'd left Sheffield was which was amazing so when we got back to Sheffield a few days later um, uh, Ray Harris came up to see his family uh, and we were having a program we used to have a program every Thursday at their house and he said um, um, uh, Sri Majesty said she would like to come and do a public program in Sheffield, uh, and uh, and 
it was it was to be you know it was either two or three weeks away um because we went to um london on the 2nd of july i believe it was and she must have came about the 22nd yeah some some big like that uh so we had this uh uh, this excitement of trying to get ready for this for this uh, really big event and as anybody with organizers knows it's not so easy to get a hall in such a short space of time but we did we managed to get one now we've got the library theater in Sheffield which is um, right next door to the Lyceum which is the big well-known theater in Sheffield and uh, so the time came when the Shemastia was coming and she was going to stay at the Harris's house and uh, and I was delegated to pick her up from the station. So this was a really big event. And um, when I got to the station, I was on my own. Yeah, I was on my own driving there. And um, I had to, we, we had a Volvo estate car. Um, uh, so I had no idea how many people were actually coming. But uh, yeah, it was lucky that we had this car. And uh, as I was waiting outside at the time, you know, to pick Sri Mastery up, um, I've been there waiting there a while. And it's somewhere that you can't actually just sit there. You have to go and park the car uh, after a while. And um, Dr. Warren, who was traveling with Sri Mastery, came out and he said to me, uh, you, you can go and park the car. Sri Mastery will be some time. And I was like, OK, OK. So he said, Mother, we'll walk to the car. And I went, oh, OK. So this surprised me. I don't know why it surprised me. I couldn't understand why. Um, <laughs> why I didn't think she must just actually walk around. But anyway, that's what it was. So he said, uh, she must be, um is having uh, her photograph taken and she's going to get um, a, a family rail card so that her grandchildren <laughs> can travel cheaply. This is what a porter had mentioned to her. He was saying, you should get one. So she was getting one. So this was quite a big event, uh, as we found out later that Shimashi actually um, went in the photo booth to have a photograph taken and combed her hair, which apparently is, is something really special. Uh, and then, of course, she went and she had the uh, <laughs> the real card made. Uh, and this was one way, you know, you could travel with your family and your children got to travel on the train for just a pound each for each child. And uh, she actually was traveling with Patty Pro, Dr. Warren, uh, and uh, two of she Majesty's grandchildren, Anand and, and one of the girls. And um, so this was quite funny, really, because, you know, they're looking at this family, there's an Indian grandmother and, <laughs> and Indian grandchildren, and, you know, an Australian <laughs> English person who <laughs> would like represent the parents. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that happened, and then they came and got to the car. Uh, and got in the car, uh, which was interesting because I didn't know, but apparently they were at the back in the in the estate car. They there there was some seats that came up that the children could sit in, and so there was Patty and and Shimashi, you know, in the back, and Dr. Warren sitting beside me, and uh, and the children in the back in these uh, pull-out seats. <laughs> so so uh, then we were like driving. Uh, across town and going to, to Mrs. Harris's house and it was like um, I was very nervous you know because although I drive it I'd not been doing it all that long but also you know you know we've got Shemastia in the car and I always remember that my driving instructor said to me you have to drive as though you've got a duchess in the back and I thought well I'm doing much better than that <laughs> so but I that is amazing <laughs> it's Shemastia amazing said to me, it's okay. It, it's all right. It's all right, you know. So I got us to the to the house and uh, and parked outside the house, and uh, we were getting everything out, the children out, and the luggage out, and what have you. And uh, and then she managed. She was asking for her makeup bag. Well, this totally floored me. It was like God has makeup. <laughs> so it was like, oh gosh, it just like really just blew me away. You know, a bit like that she managed. You could walk. <laughs> It's like it, it's like you you know you just don't expect that you know you should have elephants and carriers and things like this but <laughs> yeah it's not outside the house that's okay uh so uh she must she came in and um I found myself in in the room with her uh 
I'm not sure whether anybody else was there. And she must have sat down and she was like, she, 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 was, she was just so lovely, but was just like talking to me like, you know, you know, like I was an equal or whatever, you know, that uh, just talking. She said, I look nice and did I make my dress? And, you know, she must have often, and I knew not to, I, I, I knew not to answer that. And then uh, she, she was sitting there, she was just relaxing. And I just, I just bowed at her feet. Um, I just, it was the most extraordinary experience, you know. I could feel, I could feel all this power emanating from her. And I wasn't sensitive. I didn't really feel vibrations on my hands or anything, but I could feel. And it felt like as my head was on the floor and my hands were towards her and my feet, it was like, it was like there was a magnet pulling all this stuff out of me. It was, it was unbelievable. It sort of uh, reminded me, you know, you see comics and you see, you know, things happening and they show you. It was, it was just like that. And, uh, and then after a, a short time, she managed to say, you know, oh, may God bless you. And I looked up and I was looking at her face and into her eyes. And it was like, it was like you could, you were just falling in. It was like, uh, again, it was stuff being drawn out of you, you know. Uh, it was, uh, it, you can't even describe that experience that, that you, you know, that you're stood face to face, um, you know, with the goddess and, 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 you know, you totally feel that, you're not worthy, but actually you're, you're raised to this place where actually you feel, oh, I, yes, I'm supposed to be here. So that was really, a really big revolution. Uh, and so then, you know, the tea being brought and, and Shimasti being uh, looked after and people coming and going. And of course, we had jobs to do and things to get ready for the public program, you know, and flowers to collect. And, um, and um, so we went off to do that. And um, um, yes, I was with Ilana and we were a little bit worried about um, Mrs. Harris. She was doing the cooking, but she'd not been well. I thought it had been a bit of a problem for a little while. But uh, um, so we, it was a long way where we had to get the flowers. But anyway, uh, Ilana wanted to turn back thinking her mum didn't have enough help, but we had to carry on and get them. We needed to get them to the place. Uh, so, and then later, later on, uh, when we came back, um, I took, I went with John Glover and took Sri Mastery to BBC Radio Sheffield, where there was um, uh, a radio interview. Uh, and uh, he told me later that while they were sitting there waiting for the interview, that Sri Mastery was, um, uh, she got her perfume and she was spraying it across her forehead. And he said it was the most amazing thing because it all ran into her Agia chakra into the bindi you know uh so that was that was you know quite a remarkable thing to hear so i've just sat there you know wait waiting in the car and uh, shimasti and john come back and then uh in the car shimasti went oh we've not given them address for them to contact the person here to organize sorry just one question do you remember the date and the i know you mentioned it's 84 would you? Yeah. It's 1984. It's about it's about somewhere between the 20th and the 24th of July, I think. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay. Go on. Uh, sorry. Yeah, but it was it was not long after I'd actually seen she matched it, and yeah. it gave me the feeling that oh, you yeah. come to me, I will come to you. <laughs> Brilliant. And so it was. It, you know, it was it was just amazing, and of course, you know, um, it was it was. You can't, I can't even believe it's true now, you know, it's a bit like yes. a dream because um, it's fantastic, isn't it? It's a fantastic to believe that this experience really happened. Yes. Well, anyway, so she sent John back into the radio station with my address uh, and um, and then she was talking to me, you know, and she was, she was asking about my husband. He's not, he wasn't in Sergeant. Uh, and so this information, you know, it concerned about my address being given out on Radio Sheffield before I'd mentioned it to my husband. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so she was asking me questions, you know, about my life and, and things like that. 
and um uh and then we went back to 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 the Harris's and uh, again I think I had to go off and do something uh but then I was sitting there at the time it was to go to the program uh and um Paul Winter was there he was there with the baby Akash I believe the lady's name is and he's he's describing to Shamati about fax machines you know where you can send these written things through the through the phone you know through a machine and it it, it got through so that was quite quite an historic thing when you think that's only just the time they were coming out uh, and uh, of course I'm getting a bit fidgety and she managed to looked and she, she just looked straight at me she said is it time to go and yes mother it's time to go and <laughs> Paul Wynn said shall I, shall I take you and she said oh she'll take me <laughs> So we go outside and, uh, um, you know, I, I think I was a little worried about the steps, when I come down the steps and, and into the car. And uh, so Paul was parked behind me. So he got in the car behind me. And uh, so off we went to the programme and in the library theatre. You could uh, you could then actually drive up to the doorway because it's actually in a pedestrianised area. And so the programme happened there, which was... Um, which was really lovely. There were an awful lot of yogis there <laughs> because they would always travel, and um, uh, and uh, there were there were there were one or two you know little incidents. I'd, we'd mentioned it to a reporter and got him there, but he was quite rude. Really, he was taking mother's po photograph as she was speaking, you know, uh, and so that wasn't very nice. Uh, and then um, you know, people went to Shimashi at the end of the program. It was it was a lovely program. I think it's at this one that Shimashi talks about the she field, uh, and, and we were a lot of women. <laughs> um, yes, I tried to find that um, public program on the um, on Ruta side, but it's not there. It's difficult, isn't it? I I I got a copy afterwards, and it was from Ian Paradine. Oh. It was in Switzerland, I believe it is Switzerland. Uh, and yes, I, I've not seen that one. And they did video it, but it was very bad quality, really bad quality. Yeah, even if the audio is there, probably it's worth putting it, but never mind. Sorry, yeah. carry on. It, no, it, it should be there in yeah. audio. It was on cassette. And uh, so um, then uh, a family came. So there was Dr. Geeta there. She lived in Worksop. Uh, Dr. Geeta was there. And what happened, this family came and they came with this quite disabled child. Uh, and they went to Shumatji and they, they obviously thought she could heal the child, you know. But Shumatji, you know, asked about the, the, the baby's, the child's date of birth. And she pointed out that, you know, the mother must have been out in an eclipse. So this is where we got the, the notion was that ladies having, you know, uh, babies should not, not go out during an eclipse. And she was referred then to, the family was referred to Dr. Gita, you know, and, uh, and you know, that, that caused quite a stir with her, uh, with Dr. Gita. Uh, so uh, after that, we all went back to the Harris's house and uh, had a really lovely meal. Uh, well, everybody did, and they it was quite a small room. So what happened is that they um, we had to pass the food along. She actually got her food, you know, uh, uh, came to, but everybody else, we just had to pass it along. And during this time, of course, um, we were running out of milk for the cups of tea. So Ilana and I went off to get some milk and we got back all the food had gone. But anyway, <laughs> it was enough that they were there and shared this time with Shimatiji. It was, uh, yeah, it was, it was just so lovely. I wish I could remember some of the things because Shimatiji would always talk to you about uh, various things that came up and, um, and what was good and what was happening around. But unfortunately, um, um, we we didn't know about that. Um, so she managed to had arrived on the train, and I believe she went back. Her car, uh, Mercedes, arrived, uh, and I I believe that Doctor One drove her back. So that was uh, and that was quite early on the the, the next day. Uh, I did mention that she, uh, Mrs. Harris had not been feeling so well, yeah. and she was she was in her bedroom. Her mother passed to go to the bathroom, you know. And and she she would call Mrs. Harris Harris, <laughs> and she said, um, you know, um, is is there um, what what is the matter? And, <laughs> and Mrs. Harris was saying, you know, it's her foot. She'd had a problem with foot. So she wanted to just sat on her bed next to her, 
I put her foot on Mrs. Harris's foot. And uh, I tell you, after that, after that weekend, she was very, she was very okay on her foot, on her feet then. So that was really lovely. Brilliant. So, uh, yeah, and so, of course, I didn't see them much the next day. So that was, um, that was the visit to Sheffield. So That's spontaneous. Amazing. That's amazing. At this point, um, may I just mention that uh, Joan um, has been a very uh, successful uh, businesswoman at this point in time when you met Shimataji, wasn't it? And, um, you know, there's this whole story of transformation, um, I don't know, or the journey to joy for Joan um, with her realisation uh, how was that, Joan? How was that, you know, a family, a career, and then this? Yeah, well, the thing was that, you know, it, it was that when I when I came along for realisation, um, you know, we were running a business. I got children. They were about nine and five. And uh, we had a business um, um, it was like doing the electrics on cars and also a shop. And really, we were just like hamsters. It was just like, just you know something busy 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 all the time and I was always feeling quite stressful um I had asthma um I, was, I had permanent headaches it was always you had to be somewhere else no matter what you were doing uh and um I also I just got glasses uh and you know at that time glasses were very expensive and uh the thing was I got realization <laughs> then I started the meditation and um, I didn't need the glasses. I didn't need the glasses for <laughs> 12 years. It was just like, okay, you, 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 couldn't, you couldn't even explain how this could happen to you. And the thing was that, yeah, I did. I, I first, one of the first things, we had a big house and one of the first things, I couldn't shout for my children. Uh, and as I got quieter, mm -hmm. and they did. And it was like, it was like that whole relationship completely transformed. I could fit everything in the day. No matter what I was asked, I managed to do it, you know? Amazing. Uh, I, sorry? Amazing, amazing. And, yeah. and it was like, it didn't matter what it was. And I would always be ready, you know, <laughs> with oh. things and everything to get to the to the meeting place <laughs> for the, for the <laughs> programme on a Monday night, you know, when we used yeah. to take, the big chart and, and the altar and the tea things and the cups and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was just amazing. I mean, you you yeah. could do all this and and um, be free. There, there was that the, the complete transformation in me was um, was the a that I could do everything. I could do it with a good heart. Mm -hmm. I could be more open with people. Uh, so that meant everything improved you know the business improved the relations with the customers were good because we worked it was on the same property it was on you know our house and the garage were the same place uh the kids the kids you know I yeah. I, I really enjoyed my children after that you wow. know amazing yeah because my my uh the second one he he was born realized which I realized after I got realization and so I was able to like sort of like be able to deal with the things you know like when they get overheated and a bit yes. excited and what have you and know what it was that was troubling him and uh yeah so that transformation really made well it changed my life I I, I uh, immediately stopped having asthma that wow. was the headaches you know it was like after that it was like got a headache why have I got a headache well <laughs> yeah so it's a big event if I have one there so it's very 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 lucky but you know it's just normal life yes you get used to it. I got used to feeling well all the time yes used to yes. being able to cope with whatever yes this is what when um when the pandemic came and everyone was talking about the new normal uh, it just came to one's attention how you know um we kind of have this life which 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 feels to us like normal you know we just take it for granted that things are just sort of flowing they're working out and 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 and, and there is these blessings of shimataji just because um we have the uh, 
enlightenment, so to say, the Kundalini and our connection with Srimataji, isn't it? So do you remember any humorous incident with Srimataji where you had a good laugh with her or um uh not not so much not so much in the 1984 program um no. i was like i you know i was like so out of my depth <laughs> i couldn't yeah. actually believe that i i was i was there and although i was with shimashi it wasn't for very long no okay Fair and, enough. Then, and then you see all that would happen at the time you know when they were eating all the yogis were eating with mother in 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 that room mm -hmm. uh and and it was very quick because it was like from one afternoon to the next really it was quite like that and the time just flew wasn't it yeah. would you like to share with us the um the program of 1984 the public public program uh you told about the venue and the people and that your address that was given out on the on the radio what what happened did people come and sort of throng or there was um it's very hard to, it's really funny to to look back at that time the, the the theater was that you know you you went down steps you came in the door okay. you went down steps so the 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 it was tiered there were there were quite a lot of people there um and that and and then it went down and then she must you went up onto the stage you know and i can't remember all that she was talking about there was it, it was a really a really lovely a really lovely talk uh but the 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 room to me seemed really quite full mm. and but I don't remember an awful lot of it because then I'm I was busy thinking about I have to drive them back you know sure. big deal. <laughs> yeah in one piece <laughs> yes and of course as the talk's going on we are just feeling you know just amazing you know the yogis were there the vibrations were flowing you just feel amazing yeah. and, and then I, I then I had to go out a bit early to get to the car you know because uh, um, I think Bala maybe somebody or oh, Dr Warren was helping she managed to come back to the car so I don't it's a bit of a blur that bit mm. you know the actual mm -hmm. program sure. yeah. but I'm sure there's a lot of older yogis who are actually there who can remember sure. and, and, um, and so you know it was like get into the car so I, I I maybe had to move it a little bit and bring it back to the door for Shimash to get in to get in but then of course uh, Bala jumped in the front and <laughs> like Patty and 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 her mother were, were in the back but her granddaughter must have gone in the back as well and then Dr Warren got in the back in the children's seat with Alan <laughs> and so the car was full again so it was just like completely completely you know, just like so joyful. And she must, she would have been remarking. She was talking. She was yeah. remarking about the things and everybody's talking, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I, but I, all I can remember is I was so concentrated on the driving to get everybody back. Fair enough, yes. <laughs> yeah, and you I don't know, get to do that every day. Drive yeah, through I, that know, day. I know, I know, because it's like, it fills your head. Well, just make sure you don't hit anything or <laughs> whatever. And you can't, it's surreal you cannot believe that this is what you're doing you know yes and, and everything then seems to flow like in a different dimension wasn't yeah. it mm. yeah it, it's not it, it's um so much as you take to a place where you do everything yes you have to question you're there you're 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 talking like you never would believe you would talk just you know somebody else you might have statue it's like you know but this big yeah. voice comes out you know and you make yourself clear and uh, yeah. and you can answer you know uh but it, it's like and then of course we got back to the house and this room was humanity sitting in the corner <laughs> it's like there are people everywhere literally everywhere you couldn't get in there to, to give people food it just had to be passed and then the thing was of course immediately we there's something else needed so off out in the car again so although i i have had times with humanity i'm i'm leaving to do other things <laughs> yes <laughs> so yeah so that was quite uh, quite so it's hard to pin it down because you know it was like uh, i think the things that stick with you more uh, when you're physically doing things that stays yes. in memory a bit more than yeah 
you know what she was she was saying but I did listen to the talk many many times you would think I could remember a bit more about it wouldn't you <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, which thoughtless, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, thoughtless awareness, that's what it is. Could you tell us about the first puja with Sri Mataji, the one that oh, you can remember? Yes. The first puja I went to was, um, so that was the first time I saw Sri Mataji when she came to the public programme in July. It was the following April before I actually went to a, 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 a puja where Sri Mataji was there. So it was, this was, <laughs> this was like so... So, um, so memorable, obviously, it's my first puja. And on the Friday, it was in Birmingham and it, and it was at Birmingham Polytechnic. And the public programme was, was the night before and in the centre of Birmingham. And um, we only arrived in time to see Sri Mataji leave, <laughs> leaving the public programme. Uh, so that was really lovely, you know, the first thing we do when we get into Birmingham is there, we, we're seeing Sri Mataji. And, uh, and then we're hearing from the yogis that uh, Sri Mataji has really, really um, uh, said a lot about Paul and St. Peter in this talk. And she really, you know, really was giving it left and right on, on, the, on, the, on the church and what have you. And then we realised that there's actually there was actually an envoy from the Archbishop of Canterbury in there, so it would have <laughs> been quite challenged there. So uh, then uh, the actual uh, puja itself in in the in the Polytechnic um, was uh, just just awesome because after the public program we would go and get our rooms in in there, uh, and um, Shimatiji was giving a talk. I think the puja was supposed to happen on the Saturday. And she might, she might have, in the morning, she might have, was giving us a talk. And um, yeah, that's right, in the morning. And uh, she was asking the leader, it was Gavin then, she said, what should I talk about? <laughs> Gavin said, um, uh, could you talk about Maha Maya, mother? <laughs> so, so she looked at him and she Oh, you English so clever. <laughs> so, so, so she actually was talking to us about Mahamaya, and uh, yeah, this there was there was so much in this talk. There was so much, and it's hard to sort of like remember. Uh, and I believe that it it was on this day. Was it on this day that it actually snowed? I think it actually snowed. So there was the morning mother was talking to us. And then um, we believed that the puja was happening in the evening or in, later in the afternoon. Uh, and um, and so we, we, we were all scurried and we, we got, I managed, I had a sari, which was really nice. Uh, I already had one as a gift from, from somewhere. So we got into these saris and we went and we we're ready to go to the, uh, to the puja and uh, and Sri Mataji comes and <laughs> she says she said um, um we can't have the puja now because um the sari's not arrived and according to them she says the organizers the yogis <laughs> according to them we cannot have the puja without the sari and then <laughs> she was talking to us for a little while and then she said <laughs> As you can see, I didn't get ready for the puja. I knew what was coming. <laughs> so <laughs> she was she wasn't in her puja, sorry. And she said, but it's nice because I can I can look. She said, generally I'm I have to look after myself, but now I can see you all looking so nice in your saris. And uh um, you know, I'm enjoy and she was saying she was enjoying that, you know. So um so that was nice. And then it was a very strong talk, Mother gave us, uh, especially about children, I believe, and the Muladhara. And she was working something quite big out in Muladhara. And I do remember that um, she, she, we were, she was meditating with us and um, she asked Anya to go and put her hand on her back agya. So it was a very strong and a very deep talk, that one. Uh, and I, mm -hmm. I don't remember too much more about that. But then the next day. And this was what, where? Um, in uh, in the Birmingham Polytechnic. Birmingham Polytechnic. Birmingham. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. 
And uh, so um, the next day uh, was going to be the day of the puja. And of course, everybody had to be out of their rooms by a certain time. Uh, and um, so the thing that happened was that when Sri Mataji arrived for the puja, um, she arrived on time and only about a third of the yogis were there. So this was quite, quite, sh quite shocking, you know, Sri Mataji was saying, where is everybody? Uh, but the message has come that, that everybody and the, and the mothers and the babies and everybody had to get out of their rooms before 12 o'clock. And so this was why um, people weren't there, you know. They were trying to get ready and pack their stuff and get out, you know, all at the same time. So this happened on the 23rd of uh, April, Easter Sunday, uh, which was also St. George's Day. Mm. Amazing. So this was quite phenomenal that all this. Yes, it is phenomenal, yeah. Yes. Uh, and um, uh, so it might have been actually that this was the time the snow came. But anyway, I can't remember whether it's that the other Sunday that the snow came. So it was, it was, it's quite uh, awesome. Awesome is the only word I can yes. just remember that Sri Majesty was sat on, you know, it was a throne so as far as I'm concerned. And there was a, a big, a big uh, sheet, something behind her, you know, that was red. And uh, that I, I believe it was there. But it was just, it was absolutely stunning, you know. I don't have words to describe that feeling that 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 you were at something momentous. It yeah. was, it was it, you know, it it completely took your breath away, and it was, and it, you know, you're almost thinking, how am I here? You know how you know this is like you've gone up to the heavens, and yes, you know, and yeah, and it, it just it just didn't seem real. It's so far removed from normal life, you know. It was yeah. stunning, uh, and uh, I, I, I again don't remember the talk, and I, I must have listened to it so many times. Yes, uh, but it, it was, it, it was just completely awesome, and a lot, even after the puja, a lot was going on. You know, uh, there were some gifts uh, yeah. that had been sent from Australia. Wow, pictures, you know, uh, that uh, that we were handed. Uh, I think the gift from Birmingham was a framed photograph for each centre of just one foot of Sri Mataji, you know. Wow. Amazing. And that, and that was, and I can't even remember what, but somebody will have this picture, and you know, we'll be able to share that. Okay. Uh, and so, so there was that one, and I, I remember, you know. I had to go up and collect it from Shimatsuji. And and she was looking at me and she was telling me that I looked nice in my story. Beautiful. Oh wow. And, and she and she handed this this beautiful oh. picture to me. You know, it was it was so amazing, just so amazing. It's I can't, I just think back now, I'm absolutely stunned. I'm a, I'm as like more stunned now that it happened than I was when I was there, you know. And yes. then, there were other pictures offered, you know. Oh, it was just, it was just out of this world. It was out of this exactly world. the expression, yeah. Yeah, and then Sri Mataji was asking, telling us to ask her questions, you know. Uh, she was saying, ask me the questions that people ask you. Mm. and uh, I was a bit timid but you know I thought I will ask this question because I need this answer you know and so my question was uh, Shri Mataji how can we convince people that um, this is the right thing that you know this is genuine this is real uh, and she did explain uh, she did explain about um, only until they do it you know like um, she was explaining about you know you can you, you can hold a rope and think um think do you pick up a rope but when you look you can see it's a snake and you will put it down and I think she also described about the elephant mm -hmm. you know about various blind people feeling at the elephant and describing um 
thought it was and it all sounded different to everybody else so yeah and and about colors uh she was saying about artists and colors uh, and she and she said they they have to try it you know they have mm. to they have yeah. to experience it experience uh, yeah yeah so so that's what you know I remembered from there but it was just it was it was the most joyful thing I'd ever been to in my life you know wow. Wow. and and this was my sort of like my first opportunity to be making those connections with other yogis yes but also apart from that that was going on Sri Majdi was arranging to do lots of public programs throughout England throughout mm. the UK you know and she was picking the dates and getting everybody to commit to what they could come to you know so mm. again you know so much happened in that one weekend and especially on that day you know and from there um the other puja would have been the Adi Shakti puja if it happened then and the guru puja was it like that uh it was the guru puja i don't believe that we at that time we had adi guru uh, adi yeah adi adi shakti puja okay I tell think us about the, the guru puja please you know it, because the thing was that pujas came more yeah. later yes so that's right yes 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 yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah so so yes yeah, so the guru puja was which, which was in um it was in france uh paris i think it was and um so this was the first time i was going abroad ever first wow. time i've ever been on a plane big uh, thing did we go on a plane we may not have got on a plane actually we may have gone on a coach yes we we probably went on a coach we did a lot of coaches then uh, and um uh i remember it so well because also there was uh, it was the first time i met shyla glover uh, at this actual puja so we we get to we get to paris and it it was chaos <laughs> it was absolute chaos we were trying to register but you know there was nothing happening there it seemed to take all day to get us in there and apparently we were in a place where every false guru <laughs> they, they all stayed in this same place so there was there was lots of uh, lots of confusion uh, and then they eventually got us um got us booked in and uh, and then you know we we put our stuff down and then we we were going to a lecture uh, we didn't realize we just went where we were told uh, but apparently at this time Sri Majesty was arriving and um uh and it 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 was quite it was quite shocking to find that you know people hadn't been sent to welcome her and um so it was it was it was sort of like a horrible feeling when then we realized that you know Sri Mataji hadn't been met at the airport so you didn't know that Sri Mataji was at the airport and the the yogis were asked to go into a hall for a meeting sort of thing that, yeah that's like we were just heard it and we were in this hall and we were you know this somebody was talking and uh, we had no idea that Shimachi was arriving around that time. Oh dear. Uh, and and of course the import of that didn't hit us while later, uh, when Shimataji did actually arrive, and uh, and so we were lining up on the roads, you know, as she was being driven into this place we were staying at. So at that point, at that moment, we had no idea of the seriousness of what was going on. You know? And um, so later in the evening, or later on the afternoon, um, she actually came to talk to us and she was very angry. She was saying that, you know, all the deities were really angry that, you know, she said, you've come all this way. Why? You, you've come here for me and, and, you, and you're treating me like this, you know? So it was quite, it was, it was quite shocking, but it, it was, looking back it was the time where the all had to be brought you know into actually who she matched you was and how we were supposed to behave and what we had got I for myself I didn't fully understand what it was mm -hmm. this having self-realization you know 
but um, it, you know, uh, apparently she managed, she was going to leave straight away. She wasn't going to stay there. She said there wasn't going to be a puja, that all the deities were very upset uh, and didn't want this to happen, that we didn't deserve it. Uh, and she really, you know, said, you know, we have to take it to pass here. We have to, we have to like show that we realized this was not okay. And she said that we should all stay absolutely silent, not talk at all to each other or at all. We should be silent for 24 hours. And so we sort of like left that first program quite subdued, you know, just went about getting things done and really going inside and, and thinking, oh gosh, you know, how, how, how can we, you know, how could we have treated she matched you like this, you know, and really introspecting and and mm -hmm. and um, and absorbing the thing that this was this was like the most momentous event ever that she matched you was coming was yes. there in person, and we were allowed to be there, you know. Um, Amazing that is, yeah. Um, it, go on. It, it was it was it yeah, it was it was really hard and very shocking. Of course I'd never I'd never been in a different country. I'd never, this is the only second puja I'd ever been to where I might have some idea what might be happening. Um but also so we had this time. Uh so we had a time of reflection for the 24 hours. So no talking to anyone for 24 hours and 24 then four hours, yeah. You just, you know, it just went. And you, you you wanted to be inside. You wanted to 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 absorb and uh, look at yourself and think. You know what is what is it in me that mm -hmm. I did not recognize the importance of mm -hmm. why I'm here, and you know who we were. How how could we have offended humanity? You know, uh, and it's easy to say. You know, well, the, the organizers didn't do this or that or the other, but you know we were. We were being shown it's our own personal desire mm. to treat to treat Shimashi with the actual protocol that is required, and um, uh, so it, yeah, it was a big, it was a big thing. And right up, I don't think until the last minute did we think the puja was going to happen. So it was like the next day, uh, you know, we quietly went off to bed and we were very quiet the next morning in the meditation and everything. And then we got a message that there would be, you know, that we were going to be lucky enough, in spite of what had happened, uh, that um, there could be this puja. And um, so, you know, we got we got ready and we went there and, um, you know, this was Srimati like I'd never seen her. You know, it was like the full majesty of, you know, all the deities being present and of who she was, you know, like because all the deities are in her. And um, so she, she, you know, we, we were sat there, it was very quiet. And she was, she was again saying um, that she could only have this puja by agreeing with the deities that only those who wanted to go to greet her could come forward to do the puja all the leaders had to go back they had to go back sit at the back and uh, and and in it was in that way that um, that the puja took place and i i can't remember what was said or anything about it because it was like it was just like stunning that we actually were allowed to be there you know yeah. uh, and then it was sort of like later after the puja later and Srimatri came uh, and was talking to us and and then I think there was some bhajans being sung uh -huh. and uh, I think they were singing this song uh, she's got the whole world in her hands and people were coming up with different things and then somebody said you know she's got forgiveness in her hands and and that seemed to break it, you know, like suddenly, you know, uh, you know, she was saying, oh, my children, you know, oh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, know oh, you know, you know what to say, you know. And so then our mother was back 
you know. Oh, what a relief that must have been. Oh, it was. Oh, I tell you, you were just waiting for that storm to break, you know, that tension that, that you know, even though you've been to Puja, um, you, you know, you felt gravity, serious, yes. serious, deep gravity, yes. but you didn't feel joyful, that I can recall. But after she managed to talk to us and then, uh, uh, and then it, it, you know, it seemed to be all right, you know, and, you know, all the, all the, uh, and, you know, the, um, the musicians were singing and the bhajans were happening. And then came, I think it was at the end of the puja that Sri Majesty took her leave, but she was in her car and this was like in a big, there was a big, I think it was in a marquee uh, or a hall. But anyway, we went outside and there was a field and Sri Majesty was in the car and the window was down and she was waving and it drove round and round this field. Just round and round. Amazing. Thing, like putting us in band. Yeah. yeah. It A was special blessing. Oh, com complete blessings. It was almost like you've been so far down, but suddenly you were so high up. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was like she much you sort of raised us all. We had mm. to be at this pinnacle, you know, where, um, you know, we knew who she was and, and what our job was, you know. So after this Guru Puja, my God, that must have been a Puja and more. Uh, just listening to it is just awesome and awe-inspiring mm -hmm. in itself. And and yet that relief and the joy of pleasing Srimataji, our mother, it's like, wow, amazing. Um, after this, what happened? When did she come back to Sheffield and... Uh, Tell us something about the gifts and presents that you would have given or you would have got as well, please. Yes. OK, but I should mention that, you know, we really got over it at the next Puja Sri Ganesh Puja in Brighton. Oh, yes, please yeah. do. Oh, OK. So so we'd had this very awesome experience. And then the next Puja was in Brighton, uh, which was lovely because... <laughs> Every single yogi was at the train station with a flower in their hand to greet Sri Mataji. <laughs> so, and this is, you know, and Sri Mataji was so pleased. And so it was just so, so lovely. So, you know. Yeah. Mother was back. Yeah. Uh, but you felt so much more love because we'd yeah. been forgiven, it felt. We were forgiven and we were on to, to the next thing. So that was that was the, you know, really um, wonderful thing about this puja. And um, uh, yeah, so I'm not going to go into that too much because I'm sure somebody else. Was this the place where, where the, the the couplet, Mataji, Mataji, your face shines like a Yes. Thousand. Oh, yeah. yes. As, as we can <laughs> imagine, it's a public place, you know. <laughs> People are trying to get on trains. There's just a corridor on the empty to got to pass through. Amazing, and, isn't it? And and mother came through. She took the flower off every single person, uh, and she came out and she was she stood at the car. And uh, as she and uh, you you see on the video, you know that mother's coming out and she's laughing. She's got flowers in her hand. Greg was at the side, and she's just like so happy. And um, she, then she stands at uh, uh, in front of the door of the Mercedes and all the yogis have come round the car totally surrounding it and this is where you know Greg Wells starts the singing at uh, Mataji Mataji your face shines like a thousand suns you know so um so we're there and then you can see mother and her face changing you know because she, uh, because you know she's she's just so pleased uh and um you know it's almost like Yes, these are my children. It's like, you know, when your children are being really naughty and then <laughs> they do something so sweet, you can't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was like that. And you could see wow. the tears and, and she was laughing and she was, she was. Oh, you know. was so beautiful. So to see this change in her face is it, stunning, you know, absolutely stunning. This yeah. reminds me of, um, you know, how Srimatji, I mean, she is the Adi Shakti, of course, and the Mahamaya, and how. Um, you know, in her physical being, when she was doing all these programs and, you know, having such a hectic schedule, 
two days here, three days here and, and you know, flying or uh, driving uh, on the trains and yet not getting tired and nothing showing on her skin. And um, was it some experience that you had where you could sort of see the difference between her as this absolutely, you know, total divinity incarnate and the human element? Well, yes, because when when you were before her, <laughs> you know, you were her child. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So she would talk to you and she would talk to you as um, sort of like an equal, like, you know, that yes. part of your family, you know, um, there's the Maya you have to watch, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And to, to, um, yes, because the contrast sort of like between the Guru Puja and also the majesty of, of Sri Ganesh Puja, which was so so incredibly loving that anybody could actually um bring that to you and the thing was uh, just recently I, I just had a look at Sri Mataji's itinerary and literally every day she was in a different country practically mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it was phenomenal but we didn't see that in her in her face you know and, you know, she often said, didn't she, I'm running a marathon, you're only in a relay race. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, and it was like, whoever came before her, she, they got the full attention for, for a moment, you know, which was like about as much as you could bear. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> because, it, guess, you know, yes. it, was, it was great, but ne ne never showed, never no. showed that. Um, from the way she was traveling I mean it was phenomenal you got because we used to have a magazine you know in Mali Yoga it would be on the back all the places she she was going to and she mm. went to those places you know it's like gosh and and giving the public programs and um yeah but she never she never looked tired or anything at all you know and how hard she worked for all of us still I, works for us I, and and yeah. and you know I mean yeah, I mean, how grateful can we be? Yeah, because like 1985, so many public programs just in the UK. There was Bath and there was Bristol, there was Sheffield, there was Birmingham, there was, um, there were there were so many. Several. Plus she's also going to different countries. Yeah. Tell and us about, sorry. I was no, going to good. ask you about some presents that uh, you would have given to Shramataji and presents that she would have given or some mementos that remind yes. of those yes. occasions. Yeah, well, not long after the, the Sri Ganesh Puja, uh, I, I got a message from Gavin, the leader, to say, you'd, I think you should invite Shramataji for, um, for a public programme in Sheffield. <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> quite soon uh, and and I did get somebody Tim who was staying with her in Sheffield uh, to write this very nice invitation you know because uh, he's an artist I thought it would be beautiful because and they wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to read it because my scribble's not so good and then I got a massive message back that said you you have to write the invitation though so I wrote the invitation and got the reply that yes she actually would come and there'd be public, uh, uh, a public program in Sheffield, but it, it would be, it, I think I was told it was going to be a, a seminar, but my, my thing was to be able to um, uh, organize the, the public program. Uh, and, uh, and it was quite interesting that, you know, um, um, you offer a present to Shumatji in the, um, in the, in the, in the seminar, and uh, and we were told what to get, you know. So again, I uh, I <laughs> I delegated this to this lovely guy Tim, who's not actually from Sheffield, just he spoke Spanish <laughs> or English, and, and uh, so off he went to order uh, the 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 gift, which was to be um, the king's set. The king's set. I don't have the actual uh, spoon, but it's like this. It has two forks, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll notice this one is a bit discolored, okay? Uh, and that is because this is real silver and this is not. But also, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't made in Sheffield. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, it was made in Birmingham. <laughs> right. 
so it came as a surprise on the morning of the actual yeah. um, uh, seminar to be told um, that she might have just changed her mind about the present and she would like a tea set. <laughs> so so uh, we know we've got this um, this this morning, this couple of hours where she might just having, you know, talking to the to the yogis um, uh, to go out and find a tea set. Well, I didn't think this was a problem, Mrs. Sheffield. This is where we make yeah. <laughs> we make silver and steel, and that's what renowned for it. Made. Yeah, <laughs> apparently, it's not that easy in August, August, September. Apparently, it's seasonal. <laughs> I don't know what they do. Make it and put it on a shelf until they decide to sell it. So we were going off for this. <laughs> we were going off for this for this tea set and we had to go into the centre of town. We're right on the outskirts of town at the Sheffield Polytechnic, which is where the um, seminar was happening. And um, <laughs> so we go into town, we're going to the Sheffield shop, which is where they sell all the goods made in Sheffield. And they said, uh, um, they were very sorry, they hadn't got a tea set. Uh, they're seasonal, they don't have them this time of year. It was like, no. So then we would like, we were in an alleyway <laughs> trying to try the vibrations where to go to next for for the tea set because we were on the spot we didn't know you know more than uh, an hour before we were there to buy a tea set <laughs> so we went to um uh Cole brothers in sheffield which is most people know as john lewis you know uh, and we went there and we actually walked in in the department of um you know where they do all the uh, all the crockery and everything and there's tea set on sale you wow. know and we're looking at this tea set thinking that's amazing it's got it they've got a tea set so we were just so grateful there was a tea set wow <laughs> thinking that and it, and it was on sale you know uh so we went to we went to buy it and they said um um we'll we'll polish it we explained it was a gift they said, okay, uh, well, we'll polish it for you. They were going to polish it anyway, whether it's a gift or not. But if it is a gift, we will wrap it for you. If you go and get yourself some a card and some wrapping paper. Wow. So, because uh, bear in mind, we've, we've only got a couple of hours to sort this. Yes. <laughs> so so um, they polished it. They put it in this beautiful box. They wrapped it. Uh, there was a card. I wrote on, I wrote on the card. Uh, to our Holy Mother, with all our love and with all our hearts, with all our souls and with all our minds, which is quite wow. the Bible. Uh, and, and, you know, we were <laughs> just made it to the end of this seminar. Uh, so uh, we arrived and so I was with this Yogi Gareth uh, and um, it, was, it, was, it was just like so lovely. We got back in time, gave him the present to pass it on, you know. Uh, I went and stood at the back and then she must she opened the box you know, and she was absolutely delighted with it you know and she's looking at it she's looking quite serious and then she looked at Bruno and she said did you go for this and he went no mother Gareth and Joe went you know so so she like really smiled you know and she's looking at it and there's there's a pattern on it so it's like it's a square shape pattern and she was describing that it this was a famous pattern in India Wow. And, uh, and and how beautiful it was, and how um, uh, that her and the CP would actually use this for them for their morning or afternoon tea. You know, wow. uh, well that was very very beautiful. And then it turned out that Gareth uh, actually worked in for a little while in this this place where it was made, and he could have had a hand in it. You know, when it was made. So that was really absolutely stunning. So we knew that Sri Mataji was like really, really pleased with this present. Uh, so the thing was about the the um, the the, um, the king set was um, when I reflected afterwards, why did we have to change the present? You know, I didn't even realize it wasn't fully silver, but it was that always sort of like somebody. Who wasn't actually from Sheffield that we we sent to do this, and then they had to go outside Sheffield to get it. He didn't know it wasn't made in Sheffield. It was like all these little coincidences, and I was thinking, oh, it probably just didn't follow that line, you know. <laughs> it should be Sheffield yeah. to get the Sheffield thing. It was bringing it to the Sheffield seminar. <laughs> so as it turned out, in the end, 
yes, that the present worked out really well. And she Majesty was really pleased. Uh, and this um, public program that happened on the, um, it happened on, I think it was a Friday, to be honest. No, it must have been the Saturday. Um, so the public program happened. She Majesty actually arrived by train again. And this time she came up on the train with Dania. Mm -hmm. uh, and while they were coming on the train, I think uh, I thought it was Warren who drove the car. Yes, it was Warren that drove the car to um, to the station to pick up Shumaji. I could be wrong. It could have been. He brought Shumaji's Mercedes, probably was it? Yes, it was yes, Shumaji's Mercedes because I had a little mini then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> from, a, um, from a bigger state to a mini. Yeah. <laughs> How convenient, doesn't it? <laughs> I know. And then before I was in a big house, now I was in a small house. I just moved house, so mm -hmm. it wasn't possible to be possible to invite Street Matter to my house. So I was told to to book a hotel, you know. Uh so we, we picked um the St. George Hotel at Nether Edge. Uh and it yeah, it was part of the Swallow Hotel group, but we know it as the Kenwood Hotel, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it it was it seemed to be quite a nice auspicious place. It certainly is now because <laughs> we've yeah. been, felt the vibrations in there. Yeah. And so she managed to be staying there. So um, we, you know, some yogis had been in and cleaned room, made it nice, and um, and were um, so there were two rooms. Uh, uh, we didn't know that she managed to was bringing her niece because uh, she travelled with Dania and I think maybe her niece as well uh, and then and then they you know they they came uh, and went to the hotel and mother had a little rest before um, uh, before what did, the public programme yes so we were there we were welcoming to Mataji uh, she went to have a little rest we went up to organise we'd actually um, managed to book um, the hall in the, in a, a hall in the city hall, which is you know quite resplendent. I had tried to get um, the poshest hall we have, which is called the Cutler's Hall, uh, but uh, it was slightly out of our price range at three hundred and forty-five pounds, and I was feeling a bit of a fraud there, you know, this housewife here and um, with a shopping bag going to book a room, you know, <laughs> and, and of course um, we are cleaning our masters, you know, all the big artwork, <laughs> and there will be scaffolding. <laughs> We can't ask him for <laughs> So anyway, I had a chat with another yogi and decided that you know we would go for the for the city hall, and uh, so it was the memorial hall, which is really quite quite a uh, quite a lovely hall, you know. There. And it was quite grand. It was quite it was really quite grand. Uh, so that was where the public program was, and of course we've been dashing about, and you know the girls have made the the. Um, the stage so beautiful and the flowers were amazing and you know there's quite a few people there but there was also some really strange people you know we got this uh, guru type person who brought his three followers you know he's dressed up ah, he just made me cross as you know you will have heard in the video <laughs> they're talking about somebody being cross <laughs> so it was um it was it was really nice some nice interesting questions were being asked mother was talking and she was asking for questions from the audience and you can hear gavin shouting out can we have the realization we are hungry <laughs> <laughs> and so she must be was laughing and, and saying you know if we get to the end of the questions you know other people here are hungry they want the realization you know so that was really nice and uh i think uh Bill Hansel had introduced Mother. That was really lovely as well. Just it was just so nice because he's quite humorous as well. <laughs> and he did the description as usually happens of the chakra chart. Uh, so that that program was really really amazing. And uh, this we had a chap who was really really insistent and in asking whether she matched you wanted to go to heaven or hell when she died. And uh, because he kept asking the question, she imagined he said, I'm already in heaven. <laughs> you know, I'm always there. <laughs> she said, get your realization and come and join me, you know. Uh, and uh, he was one of the chaps who did actually turn up. 
after after um at uh, the next meeting and uh, she might be, um uh, upon leaving she was um oh i forgot there was one lady who was very very distraught you know mother had explained about all the different things i think somebody else had already asked about drugs and things and this this girl she said you know she'd been could she would she get it would she get self-realization because she'd taken drugs for a very long time she found it hard to get off and she was very distressed and her mother was just like you are going to be all right you'll be all right come to me come tomorrow morning to the hotel make sure you bring it to the hotel she was telling us uh, and uh, you know she really soothed her down and I think she did actually get realization I didn't I didn't see at the end uh, and what was interesting about that program at the end is she actually told us not to give them anything, no photographs, no literature, nothing. I know. Uh, but anyway, and on the way out, uh, as she actually was leaving, you know, she was saying, talking to everybody who was there. And uh, there was there was somebody there who was been to some false gurus, I think, you know, and he was telling Shimachi about it, you know, he couldn't feel this on his head, you know, and Shimachi was feeling, and she just looked at me and said, Tell him about lemons and chilies, you know. <laughs> so, so, and then as we got outside, um, it, I was being asked to go. I was being asked to go in the Mercedes, but I'm muttering to myself, "I can't believe these Sheffield people are so rude." <laughs> so, and she managed to say, "It's all right, you know. It, it's okay." And immediately, you know, just soothed me down. Mm. I just wanted it to be so perfect. You know? <laughs> The, what did you tell uh, sorry what did you tell about the lemon and chilies treatment how did you what did you uh, say the people well i wait they came to the program the, okay. the, the the local program and then we were able to tell them about it i think they'd been to one or two meetings anyway you know uh, and they just wanted to have their five minutes uh, and, so would you tell us about the treatment per se of the lemons and chilies? Oh, okay the lemons and the, the lemons and the chilies okay then <clears throat> so this would be about getting um i have to tell you at that time i wasn't clear because it was written in a bit <laughs> written on a piece of paper and it was something about a bowl of water that i've never never seen since uh but you know what, what we would do is we would get the seven lemons and the seven chilies and we would get um some natural material to put them in and we'd get the lemons and we cut off the the the, the stalk end of the lemon just to the white not you know not right to the lemon uh, and we we would get that and we would get uh, seven chilies and we pop it in this bag or um, if you had a box or a bowl or anything that you could put it on but also a bag that you could take it away in uh, that would disintegrate and that um, yeah so you would leave it in front of Your Majesty's picture to vibrate mm -hmm. uh, for as long as you could overnight would be good you know uh, and uh, you know then um when you've got them they won't say mantras then so we just tell them to give it a bandan you know and then mm -hmm. you know to to wrap the bag up and put it by their bedside at the side of their head and when they got in bed at night after their foot so hopefully uh, then they could open the bag and while they were sleeping you know the negativity would draw out the negative the vibrations would draw the negativity out and then when they got up in the morning to just fasten it back up and to do this for seven nights if they could sometimes the lemons go off don't they and they have to be mm -hmm. taken away uh, and um, uh, so I can't say hand on heart that they actually went home and did that but anyway uh, but they did keep coming for a little while you know um, so yeah so that was those people so I was <laughs> I was I was asked to go in the Mercedes, which um, I had my own car there, you know, uh, and so I had to hand off my car keys for, for, the, for somebody to call Tickle to bring my car back to the, the hotel. So uh, when we, we got back to the hotel, wow, uh, <laughs> we, you know, we went into Sri Mataji's room, which was stunning. So there were just a handful of us, you know, and uh, and she actually was talking to people, you know, yogis that had come up for the program, yeah. and she was saying various things to various people, so most bit personal. And, uh, and then she said, <laughs> "The makeup bag comes into it again." 
mother was asking for her makeup bag and she just rummaged wow. in. She got a jar of cream. Uh, and uh, I'd often seen this happening, but, you know, on stages and things, but she called me over and said, you know, to take some of the cream and to massage her right foot, right foot. And Sarah Satchel was massaging her left foot. And, uh, uh, and she's talking to Sarah and I'm like, very gently, you know, just <laughs> her mother turns to me and says, rub it, rub it hard. They're like stones, you know, and it was like, and she wanted me to rub the little finger, the, the, I mean, the little toe, you know, rub it really hard. It's quite tiring, you know, <laughs> rubbing and rubbing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a blister, you know, it's like holding yourself back, you've got to rub. And then she was talking to Sarah and uh, it was just amazing. It was like, it was like, I just, <laughs> you just think, well, you can't think, you know, and, no. it, and you're doing it and it's like, oh, I can't even believe, you know, that I actually got to do it. It's this. unbelievable, isn't it? It is. It's and absolutely it's, almost unreal. Totally, totally. And it's like, and you know, it's doing something to you. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, absolutely. Yeah. It's like, you're, you know, you're, it's not like you're not even in your body, you know, mm -hmm. your yeah. hands are moving, but it's like, you're, you're not there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so that, so that was happening. And then we, we had to leave for the night. Uh, and then uh, the next day, the next day was the seminar and that's the running around for the present. <laughs> Yes, and, you know why we had to get another prison, and you know we were all ready and everything, and uh, uh, and then what happened was um, they'd arranged because we had to tell Shimataji when they were ready for the dinner to feed everybody. <laughs> it was a bit embarrassing. You don't want to not be with Shimataji, but uh, as it turned out, Shimataji's food had arrived. So you know the yogis had made Shimataji's food, and. Um, in my saucepans, I should say. <laughs> ah, nice. For me. <laughs> they were going home with me. Uh, and so she actually was offered her food. And uh, and then everybody went and got their food. So uh, we felt a bit rude that we were having to interrupt, but then mother's food was there. And uh, and it was quite amazing because the girl who was offering she wanted to do food, she said, I can't believe it. She, I was offering she wanted to do the food. She said, and she managed to seem to be enormous. She seemed to fill the place. And I'm handing her this little bit of food. Wow. <laughs> and that's just how it felt to her that she yeah. managed to fill the place, you know. So mm -hmm. that was quite amazing. And after lunch, um, um, well, just before lunch, she managed she was giving people jobs. Like she gave she gave John Noyce, who's in Australia, and we all see him, you know, when he's giving you a link to a talk or something if you've mentioned something what Shimashi has said he will find it he will find it in the talk uh, and what he was say uh, what what his job was Shimashi said it said that he should uh make sure that what was said was true wow uh because even at that time in 1984 he got the light prototype for a computer keyboard taking our names and addresses <laughs> so he was like <laughs> this was like something I'd never seen before. We have already just learned about fax machines. But anyway, it, so that's what he was doing. And that's what he's done ever since, you know, from 1985. He's still doing it. Yeah, in Australia. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people, a lot of people won't know that actually she managed to give him this job. Yes, that is true, actually, that you mentioning that. Because, yeah, I didn't know. Certainly people who have come after the 80s may or may not know because, oh. yeah. And I think there was something a bit recently and, you know, I had to join in this conversation and point out, actually, that's his job. That's what he, yeah. so yeah. God is, he would do. And it was, uh, it's phenomenal because, uh, and if he doesn't know it, he'll ask the person where, what talk they heard it in. And yeah. he, it, it, will, it will be in the file. So anybody can find it, you know. Uh, and Walter Amazing thought, that Sri Mataji herself asked him mm, to do yeah. this job. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, she, she, it was sort of like, 
who will do this? And if nobody put their hand up, she would tell them. <laughs> okay. So Walter, Walter uh, volunteered to do the videos. Yes. So he bought every single one of Your Majesty's Talks, every video. And that's how they all got onto DVD, because he had them. He had them. Yes. And he would know, you know, he watched them all. <laughs> he, yeah. he was amazing. So lots of people got jobs, but I can't remember the other ones, you know. That Fair enough. The seminar. So um, after lunch, then she might, we, we'd arranged with the hotel that she might, she could be there in the afternoon to have a rest before she travelled back to, um, uh, to London. Uh, and I'd already asked her at some point whether we could have puja in Sheffield. We did have a puja on the Sunday morning, uh, and, um, but she might, she wasn't there. And we oh. think it's because we're, we're Swadi Stan, we think. You know, yes. uh, but uh, uh, but she must very sweetly explained to me that, um, you know, CP was coming back from New York and mm -hmm. she promised she'd be there, you know. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it was, it's so lovely how she, you know, she just lovingly shares information that make you feel all right, you know, even yes. though you're asking yes. something, you know. But yeah. looking back, it was good that we asked, you know. Yeah, of course, of course. Because they had one in Middlesbrough. <laughs> Middlesbrough. Anyway, <laughs> that's my <beside> time <laughs> point. <laughs> uh, so, so um, after uh, after after lunch, and she actually had her nap. Uh, well, actually, I'm sorry, before that, she said to everybody about Chatsworth House, how she'd been to Chatsworth House. It was very beautiful. That all the yogis should go there. Wow. You know, they and we were on the edge of Sheffield. We were on the edge of the Peak District. And so that's when they, they you know, they all went off uh, to have a look at this beautiful place, which only left a few of us there, you know. Um, yeah. Um, so Sri Majesty had her nap and then... Uh, uh, Warren said, "We have to go and wake Sri Mataji now," and uh, you know, I, I was just like thinking, "What? Well, she might want to sleep longer," you know. But anyway, he goes to the door. Uh, uh, I'm there. Well, I think, yeah, no, it was just me and him, and he's banging on the door. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm thinking, oh, you know, she might be upset. <laughs> Something like that, but apparently that's what you do. And uh, he'd organised the tea for her that, you know, he'd, he'd woke Sri Majesty and, and said, you know, uh, that the tea was coming. Obviously, they were getting a train they needed to go at a certain time, didn't they? But it, was, it just shocked me. Wow. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, uh, so then I, you know, I was invited to go in and he went off to organise the tea. And I was sitting at Sri Majesty's feet, you know. And uh, so she'd just been in the bed and I'm thinking, am I supposed to get up and make the bed, you know? Uh, anyway, I didn't watch to do so. Anyway, she actually started talking to me. Uh, and it's very interesting because I saw a talk even last night where she actually was talking about the films. She was talking about um, the films they make nowadays, you know, she was saying, mm -hmm. you know, how horrid it was, how, how awful. And yet they used to be such great films um of um of you know where everything had a moral there was always a lesson in it you know it was always about doing things the right way uh you know sort of like those 30s and 40s and 50s uh sort of thing films uh they were all they were all innocent completely yes. innocent completely innocent you know uh, but entertainment, you know, real entertainment. Uh, and, I, and, uh, and, you know, I'm having to say, it, I, I don't know, Mother, you know, but she was explaining it to me. And then she asked me about um, uh, the Indian girl, you know. Oh, yeah. I'm sending you, <laughs> I'm sending you lots of Indian girls. And how are you finding them? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I said, Mother, they are, they are, they're, you know, they are so lovely. We are learning so much, which we were, you know. We were we were learning different all the protocols and things, you know, and um and uh, and that bhakti, you know, the Indian ladies have this bhakti for Shamati, which is is so deep, you know. 
And so, you know, so she'd asked me about that. Uh, and, um, and, and then she asked me um, about Chantal because Ray's wife, because, you know, he obviously brought Sergio to Sheffield. Uh, she said she sends a lot of people to Sergio, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she went in Covent Garden and anybody, you know. And we actually had a, a girl who was, she came because Chantal had. She came to Sheffield and Chantal said, you go to Sarjoga there. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But she sent a lot of people, you know. Uh, and so and so she was talking about that. And then uh, and then her niece came in and started tidying the bed. And <laughs> she looked at me and she said, she wants to do it. <laughs> <laughs> she answered your question. Yeah. She didn't you answer the, yes. I didn't realise that. Yes, she answered the question. <laughs> she didn't do it. She didn't do it. She didn't do it. <laughs> So, so that was happening, I, and um, and then I think the tea arrived. So my mother had a nice cup of tea, and she handed me her her pops. So the the they're stockings, but they only come up to the knee, you know. Uh, and um, so they're nylons, they're nylons. And she asked me to put them on for her, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was blown away, you know. Too much. You wear pops. But obviously, you've got to keep your feet warm, haven't yeah, you? Yeah. And um, so I put one on, uh, and you know, and again, I'm touching Mother's feet. You know, oh, she took every opportunity for me to do that. You know, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then I noticed with the second one there was a ladder in it, which is you know when a thread gets caught and it runs all the way up, so yeah. it looks like mm -hmm. that's why they call ladders. And I'm looking at it, and I think. Do I need to mention this? And I thought, well, it makes no difference if there's no other pairs. That's just going to be the one, and nobody's going to see it because mother wears a sorry. So I just go, well, mother knows everything anyway. I'll just put it on. So I just put it on. So, <laughs> so and then, um, and then it it was time to go. And as we were going out, <laughs> I tell you this, as we were going out, um, I'm settling the bill for for the uh, for the. Or the hotel and she actually came was at the side of me and she said uh, let me pay for this and I said no mother <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm saying no to mother I was like shouldn't be saying no Joe should have phrased it a bit better I said no 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 I, <laughs> I wrote, wrote out the check <laughs> it was so funny and um and she was 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 there and she put her hand on my right machine and she said may God bless you you know <laughs> so I'm writing it out we're waiting for the thing and there's a big display in the hotel of Sheffield cutlery and the and the silver and everything she must just looking at it and she said it's a very reasonable price isn't it <laughs> like, like I would know <laughs> I don't buy silver <laughs> amazing <laughs> that was that was a really really funny moment like yeah, yeah, well, well <laughs> and then uh and then uh warren said to me um she much you would like to go shopping so i said okay amazing so, uh, it, i i think i'm again i'm again having a am i in the i don't know whether i was driving or not i can't remember I must have been. I must have been driving. Uh, so I was following the Mercedes. So we went to one shop, and no, I'm telling a lie. I must have been in the car with Danya and and Shimasti, and we stopped at this shop, this uh, silverware shop. And it, funnily enough, it's near where a yogi lives, who came afterwards lives now. And uh, and there was there was all this stuff. I think we've been in one or two other shops. But Warren said you have to get out. You have to go with Shimasti into the shop um and so so we did and we did um and at this i think it was two or three shops then mother was like she was picking all these various things loads and loads and loads of stuff that's why they needed the mercedes because it was all going in the big she managed she said i need some silverware i have to take it from sheffield to america so wow. that was quite interesting so and then she's talking to the to the shopkeeper and she's um uh she she was you know asking him questions about how long he'd been there you know mother always talks to people uh, and then she was like say could he do it cheaper he said i know i can't do it any cheaper than that <laughs> <laughs> so I said, okay then 
So, I mean, she spent over a thousand pounds. So much money on this. I mean, when we're thinking about that time, you know. Exactly, yeah, 85 thousand pounds. The value was, oh gosh, so much more than. Yeah, can't even imagine. No. And and then we were off to the the station. (laughs) So the Mercedes was there, full of silver. (laughs) And... uh, and she managed to get us on the train. There's only a few of us. And she managed to get us on the train. And Daniel obviously is already in there. And mother's leaning on the door, you know. And uh, you know, she was she was she was talking to us. I think there was Ilana there, there was myself there, uh, Warren was there. There weren't many people there, you know. And she mm-hmm. managed to went in a handbag and uh she she pulled out these jade pearls, you know. <laughs> priceless pearls and she's handing them to me and she says give this to Harris you know this is Ray Harris's mum this is Ray. Uh, and she looked at me and she said I'll get something for you next time it was like oh, I don't need anything the train could have took off at any second <laughs> she wanted, she's handing me these pearls and so she's talking and giving advice to you know whoever's there and, and then the train pulls away and uh, you know, and then you know, some people are then running up <laughs> and just miss Shamati. They were they were a bit upset, but you know, that's just the way Shamati wanted it. You know. Yes. What but, colour sari was she wearing at that point? Would you remember? Can't remember. No, I know. It's a right. I'm just curious. <laughs> it was like, I you know, I have tried this before. I will remember the colour of that sari. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> message me later when you when you do because they're all so stunning aren't they absolutely absolutely they, they take your breath away yeah, yeah. yeah i'll remember that one no. <laughs> i mean even barney here she said to me have you noticed your majesty wearing the same sari <laughs> these last few talks i'm going no <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I just I just find them so stunning. It is interesting. Um, oh. Do you want to share with us the um, the things that you have from Shrimatiji, um that that still give you so much joy and vibrations uh, when she visited Sheffield? Um, it, I, I don't suppose it's something that I I really think about, but doing this. Um, remembering these things and you're right back there and for me it's um, it's working so much out of things because as you get lost in this life <laughs> even as yogis we, you know we get into the maya don't mm. we and we think we're all important in our housework and what we have shopping is, is so important and I look back and I think I know how, what did I do? How did I get in this point of life um, that everything that I needed for me to be me and to be completed and to know what I was here for would happen in this lifetime? And that's in a short space of time we're talking about, isn't it? Uh, oh, because as a child, um, I always, I always wanted some means to know like the difference between right and wrong because I could tell I was being brought up some things that they were saying was wrong were wrong and some things that were they were ignoring uh, and it was a need in me that I, that I had this this um, um, this desire to to have something where I would know mm. looking back I was always searching uh, you know I felt like an alien in my own family and like sometimes a bit of like you you just really act in this life you know it's not real uh, and and so when I came to Sarjoka um that was that was like the fulfillment of that thing you know like when you see people like on your bus or something they're quite happy in themselves I always wanted to be that person but I was the one looking at everybody else thinking oh I wonder what's going on in their life all this that thing <laughs> and not being able to get to me yeah, yeah. So to to actually come from that life and um, to find Sarjoga was was one thing, 
because then people were saying that about me. Oh, you always seem so contained in yourself, even though I'm really now I'm chatting all the time. But I can be okay. I can be quiet, you know. I can really. Uh, and um, and then it never occurred to me that I would ever ever meet Sri Mataji. And it wasn't just that I went to see her at Hampstead Town Hall, that, that, that she felt me worthy enough that she, she would, she, you know, she would come into to this life that yeah. I am leading. Um, and, you know, I've had many instances where I've had lots of nice, really incredible experiences. Such joy. I mean, there's been the times when things have worked out and you'd like think, Gosh, it must be on my way to hell, but then mother brings you right back up and you, you, you're you remodeled, aren't you? Yes. You're like, everything gets knocked out so that <laughs> the stuff that you don't need uh, goes away and then it can be filled. And um, so the the awesomeness of, of, of not only being in her presence, um, but that she gave so much to me Yes. personally as well as everybody around me everybody here in Sheffield everybody yeah. here in the UK everybody here around the world that yeah at the same time at the same time before yeah. and after and even now I mean oh. it's oh. beyond it, 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 it's like yeah. suddenly I feel like I've, I, I have grown so much and I'm so grateful for this opportunity yeah. because because a, I feel like I'm expanding again, uh, and also that, um, you know, she actually gave this to us. She gave us this job. She's telling us to radiate this love for our hearts to be bigger, to touch everybody else's heart wherever you can, uh, and and just love. Yeah, and that's all you need to do. You just need to love because it's all the vibrations, they're the truth, they're the love, they're the consciousness, and. We lose that in our day to day. Oh, we'll just run programs. Oh, we'll give realization. Oh, but we don't do that. You know, being mothers and sons. But uh, yeah, it's um, just so deep in my heart that I that all these things are buried there, and so many of us must have these experiences that through this will be allowed to relive. So I'm so grateful to you. Thank you so much, Joan, for sharing this. And I uh, thank Srimataji for bringing us all together and for making absolutely every moment of our lives really a blessing um, that we are her children and, you know, everything she has given us so thank you very much uh for joining us in the program today and uh, love from all of us and thank you shamashi uh, first and foremost all right always jay shamashi jay shamashi take care <laughs> you too thanks for you <laughs> <laughs> thank you very very much thank you